Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Storm Talk, although once again there's not much to talk about when it comes to storms for a while. I'm doing the vlogs uh, here this morning. Uh, Christy Dutton is going to be on the ev evening shift this week as Kevin is going to be taking some time off. So it's uh, <laughs> like one of those duck duck goose kind of things with uh, who's going to be the meteorologist for the day. I was the goose. Anyway, here's the latest uh, on our severe risk for today. No issue. Tomorrow, no issue. Wednesday, no issue. You get the point. 63 degrees as of this taping. Lower 60s around the area. Got some high clouds streaming in this morning, but uh, overall, a decent amount of sunshine as expected around the area for uh, today. Still a lot of problems here with that upper level low. I mean, you can clearly see it spinning. And then here is Joaquin off to the east. The European model course did a great job nailing that separation that they would have, but the connection that they do share. I mean, they're touching each other enough that has created that stationary band, and that's what's led to such a big mess with the flooding in South Carolina and portions of North Carolina. But that low is moving slowly, and it depends on Joaquin. Joaquin's got to hurry up so this guy can get out of the way. Uh, for us, though, it's a lot of high clouds really streaming in from the west. We do have a front way up here to the north. That'll be our next weather maker for later on this week. Let me show you how that's going to play out. First off, the uh, just GFS. Don't pay too much attention to these numbers. These numbers are not exact um, as far as uh, highs and lows. But in general, near 80 or so as we get into Tuesday, nice and dry. Uh, Wednesday, lower 80s. Uh, now, as we get to Thursday, I think we have increasing clouds. I'm not too sure about these spotty showers in here. I think that's a little bit of a feedback issue in the model. This is the main rain band. And Thursday evening, it should be across Chicago down to just north of St. Louis. It looks like this rain band is going to approach our area across southern Indiana in the morning rush at around 6 a.m. And that is uh, similar to the European model. But that's the latest timing of uh, arrival here. It will be, again, late Thursday night, early Friday morning. And we'll let you know if we need to slow this down or speed this up. It is only Monday, and both scenarios are possible. We uh, very well could have to do that. So uh, don't set this in stone, but just this, uh, this is just an early idea of how things will play out. If that's, uh, the timing does hold, then that means that for the afternoon, uh, the uh, concert, Away 3 News concert series, is at 5 o'clock this time around, coming up Friday night. And then, of course, uh, high school football games will be in decent shape with uh, the rain to the south at that point. We'll see how it plays out. After that, this is where we get into the long-term discussion, and this is where we get into some wow-looking data, and it's always a GFS for some reason. It always is. That's why you know you're getting to that time of the year when the models get fun, when the GFS starts seeing, uh, seeing some phantom uh, winter-like scenarios develop. It's fun, though. I love seeing this stuff and see how it plays out, but it doesn't surprise me that it's the GFS. But uh, So what you're about to see, take with a grain of salt. But you guys have been asking, is there anything out there? Well... Yeah, I'll show you some data that uh, is showing up. And, uh, of course, I'll let you know the likelihood of it. Here's the one issue. Two dates come into mind. 15th of the month and perhaps around the 20, 21st. Those are two opportunities for some troughs to move into the lower 48. For the one for the 15th, this one's wavered a lot. GFS was first to hint about this. And it usually is the first to hint about a trough. It is usually is horrible about the depth of it, location, and timing. Uh, but at least sees the opportunity first before other models do. And then it corrects itself. And today it is trying to aim the uh, trough, more eastern based trough, into uh, the Great Lakes in the northeast. Nothing dramatic here for us. I mean, cooler air, but nothing crazy. The European is very similar to that, by the way. Here is the uh, Japanese model brought to you by friends over at Weather Bell. This is for the 15th. It just starts to see it. It can't see it all the way through the entire period, but you see where it's going with it. With a little pressure that it would dig a trough in a little more into the Ohio Valley. Uh, for the 15th and 16th, so we'll see how that plays out. And then you got the other date I was talking about, 20th, 21st, somewhere around there, and here's the GFS. <laughs> couple things here. One, it shows a hurricane in the Bahamas. Exciting. But look at the high, how cold this high is, and low pressure developing in Texas. My goodness, this is like a snow lover's dream to see this show up in October. That wouldn't necessarily mean snow, but it wouldn't necessarily mean all rain either as the system were, were to roll out. So, no, I'm not forecasting snow later this month or anything like that. So don't say I am. <laughs> I hate saying that disclaimer, but I have to every year because it always happens. But anyway, um, but the GFS is seeing the potential of the trough. It's just having fun and a field day with uh, specifics. That's the problem with deterministic models that go that far out. So let's look at the ensembles, which kind of even kill all that data and try to give us a general, smoother idea of what the idea would uh, set up to be. Here is the one for the 15th. Uh, we don't have any data here from the Canadian, but here is the GFS and here is the Euro. 
Um, and again, you start to see where the GFS is the, building the trough in the Great Lakes northeast. Uh, you're all pretty similar on that idea. I mean, mainly Maine, but in general, the northeast would feel the effects of that. And here are the ensembles. Doing good on GFS and pretty decent even on the uh, Euro. And the Canadian does have an ensemble for that period. And it's actually one of the warmer ones for that time period. But they all show that it's going to likely be cooler than normal. Just a matter of how much and the exact position. But I, I like the idea of this being more eastern based trough. More so than say right over the Ohio Valley. I think the eastern based idea of Great Lakes into Pennsylvania. I think is a little more likely for this 15th shot. Now, once I go back past that, I'm going to take away the deterministic model, so you can't see those because I already well, I already showed you the GFS and how crazy it looks. There's no sense in looking at that. So let's look at the ensembles only. And for that period, it does show troughiness over the area. European is actually a little more dramatic with it, and so is the Canadian. Um, so this is the model that uh, usually uh, these trend toward in time. So uh, the, at least based on the European model, there's a sign of something uh, potentially coming our way toward um, the uh, end of the month here. Again, how deep or how uh, deep this trough will be, we don't know. Looking at the CFS model, uh, here's the latest on that. This is the period from about the 15th through the 20th. Showing below normal, this doesn't mean cold Arctic air when you see blue. It just, it's saying compared to normal, is it warmer or colder than normal? And it's saying cooler than normal. Once you get toward Halloween, uh, somewhere around Halloween, it's showing cooler than normal. Again, if I don't see any greens, I don't get too alarmed. I'm only seeing some light blues and dark blues, which is nothing out of the ordinary. That would mean 50s and 60s probably potentially, so nothing crazy. But uh, at least we're getting some model support now that we do have one, possibly two cool shots coming our way for the end of the month. The question is, how are they going to arrive? Is it going to be a wild pattern? Is it going to be more dramatic? Is the GFS onto something? Nah, I can't answer that. But at least it is something to track, and we will do so on a daily basis, and we'll just see how it trends as each day goes by. Welcome to the fun and games. October uh, has had a lot of surprises, especially after the 15th, the past two years. We'll see if this year makes year three.